I'm Leon Scott Baxter, America's romance guru, and welcome to the second installment of 5 Minutes of Relationship Investment. Now, if you missed the first installment, make sure you check that out. But today, I'm going to talk to you about the reason why you need to start investing today. Let me say this right up front. There are many relationship experts, and we all basically say the same thing. If you want to have a strong and balanced and romantic relationship, you're going to need to be honest, uh, communicate, make time for each other, be flexible, you're going to need to do nice things for each other, etc., etc., etc. But see, the thing is, everybody already knows these things. It's kind of like health. You know, we all know what to do to be healthy. We know we need to exercise and eat right and drink a lot of water and get enough sleep. But still, we go and we rent the DVD programs or we go ahead and hire a, uh, a trainer or a professional. And why do we do that? Because they're there to remind us, to motivate us, and to inspire us. So my job as a relationship expert is not to reinvent the relationship wheel, but to remind you, to motivate you, and to inspire you. I do it by uh, using the analogy of finances, where, where John Gray uses planets, I use stocks and savings. Um, and it's easy for me to grasp this concept and, and apply it to my own marriage. And so my job is for, for you to want to apply this to your relationship by the end of each video. Um, I see relationships as accounts that, that we need to invest in today so we can get short-term as well as long-term results. And if we do it right, we can nearly guarantee a terrific return for each of our investments. So why the urgency of starting today? Well, as in finance, the best time to invest in your, your relationship is always 15 years ago. The second best time is today. See, the longer you procrastinate, the longer you avoid strengthening your relationship. So how do you start? Well, by making a promise to yourself and making your relationship a priority. And there's a name for this. It's called a resolution. In the last few years, every December, experts on MSNBC and magazines advise us not to make resolutions. Why? Well, because studies show that only 8% of us will actually keep them. 9 out of 10 of us will not keep our resolutions. Therefore, we're setting ourselves up for, for failure, which can be a, a blow to our self-esteem and, and damage our delicate psyches, right? Give me a break. Don't resolve to make your life better or the lives of someone else better because you might fail. What kind of message is that? See, the reason why we fail is one, we don't, we don't set our resolutions correctly. And two, when we fall off the wagon, we don't climb back on. We throw in the towel and say, hey, we're done until next January. There is a way to make a resolution that does get results though. Six simple steps. The first is make resolutions realistic and attainable. Number two is write them down. Three, give them a deadline. Four, make them measurable, something you can prove that you're approaching or that you've attained. Five, revisit your resolutions. That's why you've written them down. And number six, most importantly, when you fall off the wagon, dust yourself off, get back on, and be willing to tweak your resolution if you realize it's not realistic. So what I'm advocating is creating a relationship resolution. That's right, there's no law that says you can only make resolutions on the 1st of January. It's time to resolve to reignite that spark in your relationship, to rediscover the excitement and the, the passion. So use the six steps that I gave you earlier to create a relationship resolution. And not only will your relationship benefit, but a balanced and strong relationship can also lead to increased energy, decreased anxiety, more productivity at work, and also a stronger family foundation. So start investing today to start reaping the benefits. Now I'm going to walk you through how to make a relationship resolution. Separately decide on an area in your relationship that needs improving. Maybe less arguing, more affection, and then write this down. This is going to be your goal. Decide what's been keeping you from this goal and write down three ways that can help you achieve this. Now choose one of these ways that you think will be the easiest and then you can start writing your resolu resolution. So it's going to be like this. I want to blank, and that's your goal. So I resolve that I will blank, and that's your method. So here's an example. I want to go on more getaways with my wife, so I resolve that I will leave one weekend open each month for an out-of-town overnight trip. Now keep your other two methods handy in case this one doesn't work or becomes kind of stale. Then make sure you come back together and share your resolutions. Support each other to keep these resolutions going. And be sure you revisit the sheet regularly. And if you want more tips on investing in your relationship, pick up my book, The Finance of Romance, at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, 
or my website, CouplesCommittedToLove.com, where you can also sign up for my free monthly newsletter for couples. And be on the lookout for our next video.